So, hello everybody. A little bit more casual wearing my Law Hero hoodie. Welcome to Law Hero, my name is Jen and I make videos about the law. So today, oh, I need, I need some light in my room. Rock your body now. Back streets, back, all right. And this is the Law Hero hoodie. If you like it, let me know. And I am currently, so I volunteered myself to draft an article um, for the Law Society of Ireland's Gazette uh, on behalf of myself, sorry, by me, but on behalf of the Younger Members Committee, which is, uh, I'll just put up a picture of us. So the Younger Members Committee is basically anyone in the Law Society, you, you can join the, the committee if you want, but basically you are up to seven years qualified, which I am, and I am the only person in my committee who is in-house. And we kind of thought to ourselves, do you know what? There's so many younger solicitors, as in zero to seven PQE, going in-house. Why don't I write an article based on my experience? So I called it in the house. I don't know if the editor, Mark, is going to accept that. I'm going to try because I want to get people's attention a little bit about this topic. But if you are a um, newly qualified solicitor and you're considering going in the house, like me, Ali G's love child, um, continue to watch this video. Or if you're just interested in what goes on in house, you can watch along as well. I'm not going to discriminate. Um, but yeah, this video will give you a whistle stop tour of what you need to know, and then I am going to put um, the bones of what I discussed today into the Law Society Gazette and we'll see what Mark allows me to say or not. He's actually quite good usually. I've put in a few bits into the Gazette and yeah I would actually encourage you guys um, if you want to get some like you know you want to boost up your CV a little bit and you are brilliant at writing get something into the Gazette like Mark's really sound he will take what you have um, and if he thinks it's good he'll put it in and it's worth a try. Okay, so what is the function of an in-house lawyer? Well, basically, we control legal risk at all levels of the business. Um, obviously, legal risk cannot be eliminated, um, but we do our best to maintain it. Um, and that's our primary job, in a nutshell. Um, so what does that even mean? Um, so basically means that like any contract that's been drafted, any, uh, let's say like, you're entering into any new business from the very, very start, like an NDA contract from vendor, which is the seller of services into the business, all of those things legally be involved. If there's new projects, legally be involved from the outset. And it means that you have to have a very good general understanding of law because there's so many different areas of law your job will touch off. For example, commercial contracts, data protection, finance, competition law, litigation, property, IPIT, and um, what else do I do? Like corporate governance, any type of compliance, and like even if you're unregulated, you still need to know all this stuff. When I say regulated, I mean regulated by the CBI. Um, and then, aside from all of that, I always, always harp on about um, you need to have good commercial awareness, you need to have some good project management skills, communication skills, and some financial acumen, blah, blah, blah. I've told you guys all about that before. Um, when you go in-house first, these are the things I would recommend you to do. So like study the website, understand like what's the legal structure, who's the CEO, like how is it managed, is there a parent company in a different country, is it cross-jurisdictional, uh, what products do they sell, what services do they sell, um you know who who's the customer um like have they been involved in the media basically like the profile um and then also learn who the competitors are because then you can you know understand a bit better why they do things the way they do um when you are in-house um 
and if you come from private practice, which most people do, like I did myself, rather than drive up costs, you have to reduce costs. So instead of being a profit-centered approach, you're a cost-centered approach. So you're trying to reduce costs as much as you can. You're trying to take on as much as you can, not um, outsource as much. And basically, yeah, you're trying to develop the in-house legal function rather than relying on external providers, which are law firms. You have to be very much a natural leader in that you have to be very very comfortable with dictating your own day being at the beck and call of your shareholders stakeholders um, and not really getting direction so you will have usually a head of legal or general counsel and then you'll have the legal counsel under them um, but those people are extremely busy and they'll be dealing with like board and strategic matters so like you as a legal counsel you have to learn pretty quickly to take on responsibility to manage on your own and you have to be able to set your own direction you have to be able to take on areas outside your comfort zone and kind of self-learn a lot and manage external counsel which is something a lot of people don't like to do i like to do it <laughs> i'm like make sure you get that back to me by tomorrow um and then you also have to like manage the trainee. So it's yeah, it's a it's a really, really multifaceted role. I love it. Um, it's really my favorite thing in the whole wide world. I know that sounds really cheesy, but I really, really love my job. Um, how you get on with internal stakeholders is literally life. Like if if your internal stakeholders don't like you, uh, you're in big trouble you need to be approachable, you need to be friendly, you need to turn stuff around quick, be adaptable, you need to be, be able to explain complex, complex um, legal issues in really like user-friendly terms, you must think things through to the end, you must be strategic, you must use what you've learned in other areas of the business to new areas, like you have to be extremely malleable, adaptive person. Um, you have to learn to deal with very few resources and um, learn things by yourself. Uh, you won't have the big like precedent bank that a law firm has. You need to kind of rely on yourself and your own um, good judgment as to what is required. Or if you do need to go external, you need to develop your own internal system uh, of contract management and precedent management, which a lot of people are scared of. They like the comfort blanket of the law firm, but in my opinion, I think you can just go out and do it yourself if you have the courage. You'll really need to adapt your communication style. When you're in the law firm, you're just like, dear sirs, please see attached and blah, blah, blah. It's like so fancy. In-house, if you like write like that, people think you're just a square. And they are true. You are a bit of a square if you write like that. Um, nobody talks about that in real life. So it's very like plain speaking. It's very much business orientated. It's about we facilitate them. We're not a road blocker. We try and get things done. We make things easy for the business. So we don't have like massive like lines and lines and lines. They don't want that. They just want yes or no. And then they want, you know, a and advice to back it up they want things to be very practical pragmatic again very commercial when you are having meetings you really have to be well prepared because we'll say if you're drafting a contract you need to try and get as much information as you can so you're not going back and forth to your stakeholders all the time um you need to kind of understand and you need to preempt and be proactive about what the problems could be in the relationship that the stakeholder is having with an external supplier or whomever you really need to be on their team you need to think um, like them and that takes a certain amount of experience but you learn it quickly, pretty quick when you get in you really have to be very very good at time management and prioritizing because you're going to get thrown heaps of stuff like I think at this very moment in time I have 20 things ongoing um, and I have to be able to prioritize them every day and literally set up and we can be like okay this is what I'm going to get done this week so somebody comes to me, I'll be like, mm, that's on my schedule for next Monday. And people like that because they're like, okay, at least I know on Monday I'm going to get something. So yeah, you have to manage your expectations of your client, but you also need to manage yourself because you don't want to get burnt out either. Um, and that's that's just how you, you, you get good over time. Um, you're obviously, as I said, you're not a specialist, but you are a general practitioner and um, you might have some specialities. Like for me, for example, I'm a finance lawyer. That's my speciality. But, um, 
the other stuff like it's like 50 50 like it, it it takes up a lot of time to do the other stuff too so your specialization might not be so relevant when you go in house and and that i've seen that happen a lot of my friends as well they've come from like property background um like corporate background and a lot of the time you're just doing commercial contract stuff data protection stuff so it's not that really relevant it'll be helpful but it's just not that relevant day to day um to progress i mean people always ask about progression in house obviously head of legal is what you want um otherwise what's the point like why would you just sit as legal counsel for years and years and years so in order to progress um to head of legal you must both have like that legal acumen and be able to manage everybody but then you also have to have this strategic kind of board thinking um mindset so like a management mindset as in the kind of stuff you learn in an mba um but obviously if you're in-house you need to pick it up quickly um so it's like you know the industry very very well like you can basically deal with everything because you've seen it before and if something's new you have a pretty good idea how to handle it and like this comes from like i guess five or six years of being in-house um and then obviously you need to develop the rest of the legal team once you get to that head of legal role like you need to be a leader um to your team but also you need to be excellent at managing people um delegating you need to be really really good at hiring people because as i said there's a lot of trust in an in-house legal team you really rely on the people below you um you need to speak a lot to each other but at the same time you need people to get on with their own work when they're in house so yeah like for for um, i'm gonna stop there with kind of prescriptive uh what happens when you go in house from my perspective it is an absolutely wonderful wonderful thing to do um i went in house because i really wanted to understand the operations of my client it was the best life choice i ever made um on a personal level i became a nicer person um i'm somebody who does a lot of sport i was able to keep up my sport my relationships got better um my whole my, my whole life improved and it was because i was doing the type of legal work i really wanted to do um i before i went in-house i had the impression that in-house lawyers were uh, lazy farmed out a lot of work and were basically weak lawyers and um, when I went in house, I realized how ignorant I was and that it is certainly not a step down from private practice. That is um, such a ridiculous thing to think. And I do remember the person who put that thought into my head. They were one of the earlier people I worked for. And um, yeah, I think especially in the last 10 years, the, the role of the in-house counsel has really changed seen some very high profile people go in-house but not only that to be able to work in-house is it's not easy um it it has its own challenges and it depends on your personality some people are fairly happy being in the law firm because they only do one type of work uh it's very contained they like the certainty of it all and i totally understand that too also in a law firm if you want to become a partner it's a very clear road to progression but being in-house yeah it's a little bit more uh chaotic because your client is there all the time and they have new ideas all the time and you have to be able to move with them but i think if your personality is that type and you really do want to be a business partner which is what I always wanted to be I found myself having a lot of ideas being very entrepreneurial um, it's the perfect balance for me so I can only give it I can only give it 10 out of 10 um it'll it, I will be in this for life I'm never going to go back to private practice I know never say never but I know I en I'm enjoying this so much I, I just don't think I will um that being said though to train in a top class law firm will serve you very well when you go in-house so yeah that's my two cents i uh, hope you enjoyed this video please continue to watch and subscribe and all of that and i'll be back with the next one once i get more ideas uh, i think somebody suggested legal research that's a pretty good one so i might do that for the next one bye guys